<laughs> Tell me about yourself. Hi, my name is Katherine Winkler. I graduated from Archbishop Wood High School in June of 2013, where I was an active participant in the swim team and community service corps for all four years, as well as National Honor Society, Yearbook, and the International Club. I am currently a freshman at Temple University and a part of the Fox Business School. I came into the Fox Business School with the intention of majoring in general business management. However, after taking my first intro course to human resource management, I decided that my core competencies were more geared towards human resource management. I think that I would genuinely enjoy coaching managers to solve complex problems within their organizations, and I think that I'd be really good at acting as a change agent to ensure that companies don't go out of date, they stay relevant, and I could really help them come up with a plan for the future. Here at Temple, I am involved in not only the University Honors, but also the Fox Honors Program. I've joined the club swim team here, and I am an active member in the SBO for the Business Honors Student Association. I have worked hard to get to achieve all that I have, and I'm confident that I could continue to work diligently within your company. Tell me about a significant accomplishment in your life. My greatest accomplishment was earning the sixth place medal in the 200 individual medley at the 2013 District 12 Swim Championships. I had been swimming for 12 years, and I used those 12 years to forge valuable lifelong friendships, stay active, and feel the and enjoy the team camaraderie. I thought that any ex external rewards such as a swimming scholarship or medal were way out of my reach and therefore I was only intrinsically motivated to achieve the self-satisfaction that I knew would come by dropping three seconds from my previous best time of two minutes and 41 seconds. It was difficult to schedule the two hour practices five days a week and sometimes four hours on weekends with my schoolwork and other ex extracurricular activities. I needed to find a balance between the two and it was challenging because I'd never been that dedicated to attend practice before. However, when I did, and also when I did go to practice, I Another obstacle to my goal was actually motivating myself to get in the pool and give all the energy I had to every set and every task at hand. However, it was helpful when I achieved the flow experience. Sometimes I'd become so intensely focused on finishing a set that my body and mind would forget about the physical strain and act almost mechanically. It made getting through the sets much easier and also a lot more enjoyable because I knew that I was accomplishing a lot and I didn't feel the physical pain of not being able to breathe while doing it. As districts approached, I still hadn't achieved my goal and I was putting tremendous pressure on myself which was really increasing my nerves. However, when I walked into the building for districts, I had a high level of self-efficacy. I was confident that with the amount of determination I had, I would be able to do it. I swam my heart out in that race and did a lot better than was expected. I dropped not only three seconds, but four seconds and got a new best time of two minutes and 37 seconds. Surprisingly, I also received some external rewards and actually earned myself a sixth place medal in districts which was a really gratifying way to end my senior year and my competitive swimming career. Tell me about another significant accomplishment in your life. Another significant accomplishment in my life was when I got college credit from my AP Literature and Composition course. I went into the course with low expectations for myself because I'd never been confident in my writing abilities. However, I quickly realized that the amount of work I put into the class was instrumental in achieving the credit, which had a high level of valiance for me. I dedicated more time and effort into the class and my performance level rose. My grades increased from high 80s to mid 90s and I internalized my locus of control, which meant I prepared more for the impromptu essays instead of fearing them and blaming them for my failures in the class. 
My teacher acknowledged my growing success through positive reinforcement, which meant a significant amount to me because I really admired him as a resident leader. He instilled a confidence in my class as writers and gave us hope that, we'd be, that acquiring AP credit was very achievable. He did this through praising our positive qualities and showing us that our hard work was truly making a difference. He gave me the ability to envision my goal and envision myself achieving my goal, which gave me more dedication and confidence that I'd be able to do it. Finally, when the results were released, I had saw that I had gotten a four on the test. That meant that I got college credit and I was very proud of myself. Tell me about one of your weaknesses. I've been told that my greatest weakness is that I talk too much. I've been prone to rambling and sometimes words flow out of my mouth quicker than my mind can control them. This has led to irrelevant tangents as well as a choppy speech pattern because I'm constantly stopping to regather my thoughts. Talking too much has gotten me into trouble because sometimes I can say things that can be considered inappropriate. Also, I've been known to talk so much that it can be intimidating for other people and they feel as though they can't express their thoughts freely. In group situations, this has been a problem because I have talked over people or cut them off without even realizing that I'm doing it. However, as I grow up, I become more and more proficient at limiting what I say. I'm always trying to listen more than I speak and are constantly learning better methods of efficient communication. Through experiencing different situations, I've been able to adapt my language to be appropriate at these times. I've been getting in trouble for talking too much since I was two years old and screaming over my twin sister in the crib. However, as I mature, I'm diligently working to become more professional in my speech every day. Tell me about a time you failed. My greatest academic failure was not being accepted into the National Honor Society after my freshman year. I came into high school from a not very challenging grade school and therefore I was not accustomed to the heavy coursework of high school classes. It was difficult for me to adapt and I didn't take freshman year very seriously, which was reflected by the satisfactory marks and my rank of 46 out of 256 students in my whole graduating class. In the beginning of sophomore year, the top 25 kids were admitted into the National Honor Society. I had many of the same honors classes as these kids and a lot of them were my closest friends. I felt left behind and that's what sparked my initial drive to become a member of the National Honor Society. I set a time specific and achievable goal for myself to be inducted into this elite program by the beginning of my junior year. I worked diligently for the rest of my sophomore year and stayed committed to my goal. I never lost focus on my vision and by the end of sophomore year, I was currently ranked at 23rd in my class. And my cumulative rank had dropped from 46 all the way down to 30. I sent an extensive letter to the head of the program telling them how I exemplified the qualities of scholarship, leadership, character and service and why I should be a member of the National Honor Society. They reviewed my credentials and agreed that I was worthy to be a part of the program. I became a member of the National Honor Society for the entirety of my junior and senior year. Throughout this experience I learned that you should always put forth your best effort regardless of perceived immediate rewards. If I had tried harder my freshman year, I could have had a whole nother year of learning and experiencing the National Honor Society and all of the really great programs and work we did throughout the community. Tell me about a time you had conflict with someone else. In high school, I had to work with a randomly assigned team on a group project. Although we didn't know each other very well, our interactions started off as friendly in what can be considered the forming stage. Quickly it was discovered that we were united in a common purpose, however, we did not mutually agree on how to approach the work. Thus began the storming phase. 
I suggested that we divide up different aspects of the project and work on our own parts individually and then meet periodically as a group to ensure that everyone was progressing towards the established goal. However, another person in my group wanted us to work on the whole project together so that it could be more of a collective effort. Our differences started out as functional task conflict. However, they soon fell into dysfunctional relationship conflict. We were cutting each other off and not listening to each other's perspectives and point of view. Soon we realized that the personal tax and irritability was only hurting our team, so we really decided to listen to what one another was saying. Through this open communication, our team was able to discover that she had that the person who wanted us all to work together had a lack of trust in one of the team members' commitment to our group project. She didn't think that he was as dedicated to the team as everyone else and wanted us to work on the project together so that he wouldn't hurt our overall grade. Her lack of trust in him was prohibiting our group, pro our group progress and our productivity. Through this experience, I learned that a lack of trust can really hurt a team and that you should always have open lines of communication before the project ever falls from constructive discussion to destructive arguments. Tell me about a time you led others. I led Archbishop Wood's swim team my senior year of high school as team captain. It was my responsibility to ensure that the team con continued to do their best even though they didn't perceive any external rewards. It was difficult to find intrinsic motivators for them and to help them re realize that the self-satisfaction that comes with doing better was worth the hard work. It was important that I displayed a consistently positive attitude, especially during the physically demanding practices. I used limbic resonance to my advantage by portraying optimism to my team and allowing that energy to spread throughout the team. I led by example because I knew that if I was always trying to do my best and complete the sets on the proper time, it would be much more likely that my team would follow my lead and try their best as well. It wasn't difficult to lead my team because I was genuinely passionate about the sport. I love swimming, but I love my teammates even more. Many of them became my best friends and it was really important to me to show them how confident I was in their abilities to get better times and succeed in their races. I encouraged many of my teammates to set time specific and achievable goals for the season. Many of them followed my lead and we ended the season as District 12 swim champs. I was really proud of my team and I was so happy that my leadership was able to contribute to our success. Discuss something you have learned in class. I have learned that superior leadership is what distinguishes a company from its competitors. In class, we discuss the importance of a leader's ability to motivate and inspire their team to give as much of themselves as they can to their job. It is also the responsibility of the leader to ensure that a company satisfies its customers' needs. The Wall Street Journal article, Leadership is Key to Success of Digital Business, focuses primarily on the importance of excellent customer, customer service. It is important for businesses to hire well-trained employees and empower them to connect with their customers on different levels and give their customers individualized attention. The article suggests that many businesses are slow to evolve with the times. Potential customers are actively involved in social media and therefore businesses should embrace the social networking as a way to better connect with their customers and add in productivity. A surprisingly small number of organizations have really taken advantage of the social networking opportunities. They're hesitant because it would result in drastic cultural, social, and technological changes throughout the company. 
The success of implementing digital programs is based primarily on leadership and its ability to align the mission, vision, and long-term goals of the company with the new programs. Many digital programs are much more likely to fail if the leadership quality is not, is not very high. I have learned that strong leadership is needed to reorient companies and keep them relevant with the changing times and the changing environment in the world.